In this video, we are looking at error intervals. I'm going to give you an overview of what these are all about. For example, let's say I've got a number k, and I don't tell you what it is, but I tell you that when I round it to the nearest hundred, it is 700. Well, if you round a number to the nearest 100, you know you're going to have to get something like 0, 100, 200, 300, 400, and so on. So I'm going to represent these on a number line. I'm not going to represent all the possibilities. I'm just going to represent the one that it actually rounded to, which is 700. And the next one up in the 100 times table, that's 800. And the one down from 700, which is 600. Now, the big idea is that k rounded to 700. That means it had to be closer to 700 than 600, and it also has to be closer to 700 than 800, which means it has to be somewhere in between 650 and 750. Because if it was less than 650, so if it was over here, it would have rounded down to 600. And if it was above 750, it would have rounded up to 800. But if it was anywhere in this range here, it would round to 700. So we know that k is in this range. Now we just need to be really careful. Is it allowed to be exactly 650 or 750 or both? Pause the video and think about the answer to that question. Could k be 650 and could k be 750? Well, the answer is yes, k could be 650 but it cannot be 750. Remember, if k was 650, it would round up to 700. If k was 750, it would round up to 800. And we don't want that, remember, we want k to round down to 700. So what we're saying is k could actually be anything all the way up to 750, but not including 750. It could be 749.99999. That is okay, that would round down to 700. We can show what possible values k could have as follows. I'm going to write 650 is less than or equal to k, which is less than 750. So this is telling me that k is allowed to be equal to 650, but it's not allowed to equal 750. And of course, it can be anything in between. So everything on this number line from 650 all the way up to 750, but not including 750. Those are all possible values of k that would round to 700 to the nearest 100. Now, what we've done here is actually the point of this video. We have written what's called the error interval for k. This is just a way of showing you what possible values k could have had given this kind of information. Let's have a look at these questions then. We need to write down the error interval for each of these quantities. So we're told k is 700 correct to the nearest 100. That's exactly the question we've just been looking at. If k is 700 correct to the nearest 100, that means it is at least 650. So k is allowed to equal 650 and it is less than 750. So k can be anything up to 750, but not including 750. By the way, these values have special names. 650 in this case is called the lower bound for k, and 750 is called the upper bound for k. Now, there is a quick way of finding the upper and lower bound when you know that a quantity has been rounded to the nearest 10, 100, 1000 and so on. In this case, it's been rounded to the nearest 100. And what we do is 100 and halve it. So 100 divided by 2 and that's 50. And all we need to do now is subtract 50 from the rounded value of k. That gives us the lower bound. And then we can add 50 to the rounded value of k. And that would give us the upper bound. So 700 minus 50 gives us 650. 700 plus 50 gives us 750. 
Let's have a look at question B. This time we're told that y is 34 when rounded to the nearest whole number. So if you're rounding something to the nearest whole number, it's obviously got to be a whole number. So in this case, it turned out to round to 34. But if it was a bit lower, it might have rounded down to 33. Or if that number y was a bit higher, it might have ended up rounding up to 35. What possible values could y take? Well, it's going to be anything that's 33.5 and above, all the way up to, but not including, 34.5. Anything in this range is going to end up rounding to 34, to the nearest whole number. So anything from 33.5 all the way up to 34.5, but not including 34.5. Let's use our new vocabulary. We say that 33.5 is the lower bound and 34.5 is the upper bound. And we write the error interval for y as follows. We say 33.5 is less than or equal to y, which is less than 34.5. And that is the answer for this question. Again, Notice we could have taken a shortcut here. Rounding to the nearest whole number means rounding to the nearest one. And we take the one and divide it by two. One divided by two is a half or 0 0.5. And what we can do is subtract 0 0.5 from 34. 34 minus 0 0.5 gives me 33.5. That's the lower bound. And to find this upper bound, I can do 34 plus 0 0.5, and that gives me 34.5. Pause the video and see if you can complete the next four questions, all the way down to F. OK, let's go to question C. We know that our error interval will look something like this. We're going to have x in the middle, and we need to have our lower bound on the left and upper bound on the right. Using our little shortcut, let's think about this. It's been rounded to the nearest tenth, and it ends up as 6.4. Now, a tenth is the same as 0 0.1. And if I halve that, I end up getting 0 0.05. So to find the lower bound, all I need to do is 6.4 minus 0 0.05. And that gives me 6.35. To find the upper bound here, I need to do 6.4 plus 0 0.05, and that gives me 6.45. Now, it's a good habit to check whether this looks sensible. Let's just see, what if x could be 6.45 exactly? What would that be to the nearest tenth? Well, you can see, because it's a 6.45, if you rounded that to the nearest tenth, it would go up to 6.5. So we know that it can't include 6.45. But if you picked something that was just under 6.45, let's say 6.44, would that round to 6.4? Yes, it would. So this is looking good. Let's check the lower bound as well. If x was exactly 6.35, would that round to 6.4 to the nearest tenth? The answer is yes, it would. We've got a 5 in the hundredths column which means we would have to round up in the tenths column. So we would end up with 6.4 as required. And if you test any number lower than 6.35, you'll find that it won't round to 6.4 to the nearest tenth. For example, if you pick something like 6.31, that would round down to 6.3. Let's move on to example D. H is 1.70 when rounded to two decimal places. So our setup is similar. We're going to have H. It's going to be between a lower bound and an upper bound. Now, when you round something to two decimal places, what you're doing is rounding it to the nearest hundredth. And if you take a hundredth and halve it, you get 0 0.005. And all we need to do now is subtract that value from 1.70 to get the lower bound. And that gives us 
0.95. For the upper bound, I do 1.70 plus 0 0.005, and that gives me 1.705. So here is our error interval for H. Moving on to E, we've got R rounding to 85,400 to three significant figures. What is the error interval? Well, in this case, rounding to three significant figures meant rounding to the nearest hundred. That's the third place value column along from the biggest one. So rounding to the nearest hundred means we take that hundred and divide it by two. That gives us 50. And all we do now is subtract 50 off here for the lower bound. That gives me 85,350. That's less than or equal to R, which is less than 85,400 plus 50. That gives me 85,450. Any value of R in this interval would round to 85,400, correct to three significant figures. So this is our error interval for R. Moving on to question F, we're told that F is 0 0.062 to two significant figures. Now remember with significant figures, we don't count any initial zero place value columns. So our first significant figure here is the six, which is in the hundredths column, and because we're rounding to two significant figures, it means that we've rounded to the nearest thousandth. That's 0 0.001. Halving that, we get 0 0.0005. And all we need to do is subtract this from here to get our lower bound. And that gives me 0 0.0615. That's less than or equal to F, which is less than the upper bound, which is 0 0.062 plus 0 0.0005. And that gives me 0 0.0625. Right, well done if you paused the video and got all of those correct. We're now on to the last two examples. These are a little bit different because they involve truncation. If something truncates to 17.8, that means it had to start with 17.8. It might have had some other digits after it, but they've been truncated, they've just been lopped off. So this lowest possible value, the lower bound for W, is going to be just 17.8 itself. All we're saying is that if we know that it truncates to 17.8 to one decimal place, that first decimal place must be an 8. Now, it might be the case that there were no other digits after it, which is why W could equal 17.8 exactly. Now, the maximum possible value it could have been would be 17.899999, and those go on forever. Because if you truncate all the digits after the first decimal place, you'll end up with just 17.8. So, what we say is that W is strictly less than 17.9. In other words, W is not allowed to equal 17.9, but you can get as close to it as you like. So something like this, for example, or you could put as many more nines after this as you'd like, and it would still truncate to 17.8. So this is our error interval for W. And notice we don't use this kind of trick that we were using in the previous questions when dealing with truncations. Pause the video and see if you can do the last question for yourself. Here's the answer you should have got. Q in the middle, we'd have 0.34 on the left, so Q could equal 0.34 exactly, which is why we've got this type of inequality here. but it has to be strictly less than 0.35. Notice that the difference between the lower and the upper bound is one hundredth, which is what we're rounding to when we say we're rounding to two decimal places. 
notice that the difference between the lower and the upper bound in question G is one tenth, which is what we're rounding to when we round to one decimal place. And that actually does fit in with what we see in the previous questions. For example, when we round to the nearest hundred, we find the difference between the lower bound and the upper bound is 100. When we round to the nearest whole number, we find the difference between the lower bound and the upper bound to equal 1. And you'll notice the same kind of idea playing out in the other questions as well. To finish off, let me summarise the main point. If you are asked to find the error interval for a particular quantity, all you need to do is write an inequality like this. <laughs> 